Well, what do we have here? This is a 1964-ish vintage science classroom table. These tables were often you actually they're still they still make these. Um, you can still buy these brand new. So these tables um, were used primarily in science labs. It is if you Google science lab table, this exact uh, piece of furniture will come up. These are made out of a heavy duty, I believe oak, at least on the exterior. This is probably some other some other kind of wood. Um, and when these were made back in the 60s, they would have had a very heavy um, either concrete or slate top, and they were supposed to be chemical resistant. They also are known for these, um, these leg boots, which are supposed to hug the floor and I believe prevent chemical spills from getting, I'm not really sure what the purpose of those um, really is. But this table has been around and um, it had a top on it when I picked it up. But it was just a, um, a uh, it was a replacement top. It was, somebody had, what I believe happened is the original top had cracked when this thing was, it was probably knocked over by the maintenance crew. And the top must have been damaged heavily. So the decision was to put a, um, a laminate top in place of the original. It was just a, a particle board uh, top with white laminate and a wood edge around it. It didn't really do it any justice. So when I found this in the trash at work, the uh, the top was 86 and I loaded it into my car. This is a beautiful oak base, as sturdy as all get up. And um, now the new ones that, that they sell, I believe have a, um, a laminate top usually black. They always have black tops, either it be it a laminate top or a, um, or a solid surface. And I, I think it was either slate or maybe a, a man-made material. But we had them when I was in school, and I remember them uh, very well. They were very heavy. These tables are very heavy when, they're, when they have the correct top on them. Um, and there's a very, very real possibility that uh, the famed actress Sarah Silverman may have once sat at this very table. Not just Sarah Silverman, but Seth Meyers as well. Yes, either one of them could have once sat at this very table. Just saying. <laughs> they both went to the same school. and You can, deductive reasoning, you can figure out what I'm alluding to. But anyway, this is going to be our new breezeway table. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is our breezeway. It's, we're trying to not let this become a catch-all for junk, but that's kind of what's happened here. So this is a folding table that we've placed here because it's nice to have a table where things can be placed, you know, when you're coming in the house or we have a little basket there for packages and the mail and such. And um, I decided that uh, after finding that table, it would look really nice here, but we're not gonna keep it the original finish. I know there's gonna be a lot of folks who disagree with me on this, but that's okay. We're going to paint the base white feel that white is the color that needs to be in here. See, all the trim is white. When it's clean, it's white. Um, we've got this. It's going to match that. This is an Ikea um, TV stand that we bought, and we're using it as a mini bar. And um, we got a really good deal on it. It was on clearance. So, anyway... Neither of us really drink, but people come over for parties and they expect there to be alcohol. So there you go. There's your alcohol. Anyway, so it's going to match that. And it's going to go right there. But here's the killer, the kicker, the, the, the piece de resistance. 
This is gonna be the new top. This is a butcher block. It's solid, um, does it actually say what it is? I assume it's oak. I mean, it seems to be the most common hardwood. It could be maple. Um, you know, who knows? But uh, who cares? It doesn't matter to me. It's a solid surface. It is one and a half inches thick. And it is the exact dimensions as the original top would have been. So it'll fit that base beautifully. It's a 24 by 48 um, size. No, 25 by 48. It's, it's a little bit a little bit uh, deeper than it needs to be by a half an inch. We'll split the difference, so a quarter inch either side. Um, but that's the size top that that base was made to fit. So this was a nice little find. These are $120 at your local Lowe's store. Um, Ikea sells a very similar product, probably made in the same factory. In fact, if this was made in Hungary, that would answer that question. But I don't know where it would say that. Made in Vietnam. Yeah, whatever. So this will do the trick. What we're going to do is I'm not going to paint this. I'm going to put, um, not paint it. I'm not, not going to paint it. I'm not going to varnish it. We're going to use this butcher block finish. Just in case we change our mind and decide to use this as an actual butcher block someday, we will have the freedom to do so. So the first thing I need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and sand this as much as I can. We're gonna get some of the finish off. And it's got some gouges, it's, it's got some graffiti, it's got some, you know, it's, it's got its uh, patina. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna get rid of some of that. Um, because we're not sticking with a natural oak finish, um, and uh, for reasons that I stated, the color, it has to be white. It needs to be white for it to look good um, in that room. So because we're not keeping the original finish, it's okay. Some of the defects, we're gonna let it slide. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat the entire thing. Once that's all sanded, we're gonna put some of this bonding primer on there. This is good stuff. I use that on a lot of projects and I cannot tell you how happy I am with how durable that shit is. These basement stairs uh, were painted with a dark gray alkalid based paint and um, which is an oil based paint. And I use that bonding primer and a nice latex paint and it's holding up so well. Um, I put the stair pads on just to protect the finish a little bit, you know, from traffic. But, I mean, I've kicked these steps. I've rubbed my feet against them. Amelia's done the same. And I, I did this like two years ago. And it's holding up beautifully. So, um, good stuff. Uh, if you want to, you know, refinish something like this and you're not going to go with natural wood, just go ahead and put a put a, 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 a primer or bonding coat on there and it'll be fine. You can see somebody tried to glue the top on <laughs> at one point. So it looks like I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of deductive reasoning here. And um, these are the original brackets. There's those two. And then somebody must have lost the other two and they put these on, which is fine. I mean, just whatever. But it's obvious what happened there. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding this son of a bitch and um, make it look pretty again. I'll catch up with you guys when I'm ready to prime it. So as I start sanding into this uh, this wood, it um, you can see some of the history here. Now, this surprises me, the deep grain here. It's not cracked, but you can see this design carved into it. One of the neat things about old school furniture is, you know, everybody's left their mark at some point. There's some kick marks here. We're going to kind of leave that alone. I don't know what happened here. But, uh, yeah. Well, we got it uh, about halfway done. Um, I'm going to flip it and we'll do the other side. But, um, so far, uh, so far so good. Um... I almost regret that I'm going to paint it white. Almost. We're not going to bother with the underside of the main rails. 
are not going to bother with any of that. Well, maybe I will. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea. But I'm not going to go crazy. Um, I got to get the rest of the adhesive off. But what... It turns out you can buy these. And they are literally called science table leg boots. <laughs> That's what they are. Um, so we're going to get a set of four of those. You know, kind of bring back some of its heritage. Even though it's going to be white, not oak, or some other natural finish. I mean, I have natural finishes. i got plenty of them to choose from. But I've decided not to go that route. We could paint it red. I have this door and trim. This is actually color matched to the trim all throughout the house. This is good stuff. Very strong. Very strong. Um, I got... Oh, I should, you know what? I got this oil-based semi-gloss. This is what I'm going to use. I bought this for a project and I never used it. And now we're going to use it. Never opened it either. Um, this is actually what I used on my, my kitchen table. Same stuff. Durable paint should last a good long time. I don't understand it. Who thought silicone would ever hold a top? Like, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Silicone? I don't know, man. Jesus. So I got to do uh, the other side. Now, what are the odds, right? The odds are pretty good that, that literally either Seth Meyers... One of her siblings, or, or I'm sorry, one of his siblings, or Sarah Silverman, um, and uh, one of her um, her sisters sat at this very table. This is pretty good. I mean, pretty good odds. Pretty good odds. Seth Meyers' mom actually was a French teacher where I work and um, I've met her she's a nice lady uh, you would never know that her son was a bazillionaire <laughs> you would never know uh, where have I gone wrong in life <laughs> anyway let me uh, finish this up I gotta eat dinner I gotta go get dinner and then I'll come back and we'll finish up I'm really gross my shirt is covered in nastiness so What's the matter? Oh, what's the matter, buddy? You gonna make some candles? You gonna make some candles? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, okay. I'm gonna make some candles. All this stuff is here. Oh.
I, I got to be honest, I'm kind of torn. I mean, if we were going to stick with natural finish or, you know, stain or a poly or something, we could stop here or maybe do a little more sanding, a little more correction, um, and we could come up with a beautiful piece of furniture. But truthishly, uh, I needed to be white on the base and I need the top to be natural um, to go with the decor that we have up there. But Jesus, what a beautiful piece of furniture this would be. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I was able to sand out a lot of the more obvious defects, um, the scratches, the tic-tac-toes and all that shit. Um, I was able to sand all that out by just being a little more aggressive on the sanding pad, but I think she came out pretty good. Um, all I got to do is we're going to start off with a nice coat of primer. And that's just going to make sure that whatever finish we put on there is bonded to the max. So we'll get that mixed up and grab my uh, mixing stick. And we'll put a coat of that stuff all over her. And uh, then we'll let that dry. And maybe tomorrow we'll put a couple coats of oil paint. And uh, yeah, she'll be pretty. We probably don't even need the primer since I sanded it down to bare wood. No, you know, I think we can skip that step. We don't really need it. Because I did bring it. I mean, if we were going over an existing finish, that's where the bonding primer would be helpful. But, uh, you know what? Let's. I got primer. Let's just use it. Okay, so we've got uh, the primer on there. And that's just going to give us a nice, firm base to paint over uh, with our... Um, because this will work with, uh, I believe, both um, latex and oil-based. I know I've used it to put oil, latex over oil, but um, stain blocker, primer, sealer. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, once that dries, we're going to give it some time to dry, and uh, I'm going to firm up these uh, these leg bolts. These are actually pretty tight. Now, you know this is a an old piece of furniture. I mean, it's been around, um, and it's got plenty of life left in it for sure. One thing that really gets me is I think the frame is upside down. Bear with me on this. It, it almost seems like it should be the other way around and there should be tabs that lock into these grooves that hold the top in place correct me if i'm wrong and i'm probably wrong but it just doesn't seem right to me hmm. interesting but hey yeah so the building this came out of was built in 64, and that's about when all this furniture was purchased. So I'm, I'm guessing it's either 64 or 67. Uh, but, yeah. All right, we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to paint it. You can see, I mean, obviously, the gashes that were in the legs, I, I believe it's from chairs sliding in and out, because these were used as desks. So because the chairs were sliding in and out, it did cause some damage to the legs. Um, on the insides, on all four legs. So what I did, I'm not going to put wood filler. I, I didn't want to use wood filler on this. So what I've done is um, I kind of just sanded it in to kind of smooth it out a little bit, make it look more natural. And um, I think the effect will come off pretty well. We're using a glossy paint, so it will accentuate any defects in the wood but that's okay it's a utility table going on what is basically a glorified porch moving on all right so we got the uh the final well the top coat on there um you know i i knew the gloss paint would really accentuate the defects in the wood or the the, the really unusually heavy natural grain you could see it from space um and you can also see that i didn't really sand every i sanded all the scratches out all the 
graffiti, but there's a lot of these, this this table seen some shit. <laughs> Lots of stuff over the uh, past 60 plus years. So, 59 years. Wait. Yeah, 59 years. Um although I love it. I I love it. I I love how it came out because it You know, so far I've only used materials that I had on hand. The only thing that I had to spend money on was the top, which is a beautiful top. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous, um, I believe it's an oak or could be maple um, butcher block top. It's going to be, it's going to be stunning. I, I think I'm going to do urethane, a polyurethane. I have some clear polyurethane here. Should have some clear. And um, that's what we're going to use if I have any. If not, well, maybe we'll go a different route. I definitely have some, um, I have some Behandla, which is a kind of a, a linseed oil based um, butcher block finish uh, that they sell at uh, Ikea. And that's what I used in our kitchen. I've got some Watco rejuvenating oil. I've got Watco butcher block oil, which I just bought today. I might bring that back if I can find something else. I oh, can't find my... I have a couple of cans of, um, of poly in here. Let's, oh, here we go. Uh, poly shades. One of these cans is super old. Uh, this one, that's pecan. That's actually good. That's, that's good stuff. And I got... Valspar Baby Yellow paint. Okay, we won't be using that. Uh, I don't know why I have Baby Yellow paint, but I do. So what I'm going to do is we're going to bring the top down here and we're going to just put some pecan poly on there. I, I think that's what we're going to do. Reason being, so butcher block oil, if you're going to use it for food prep, this is going to be for packages and mail and knickknacks and groceries that we need a place to set down somewhere as we're coming in the house and unpacking the car. Um, poly is going to be more durable. It'll be a longer lasting finish. It's also going to see some moisture. And I think that's where poly is going to be a better choice. The downfall is poly does tend to darken as it ages. And that's not a bad thing. That's why so many 90s kitchens are yellow and orange <laughs> and furniture. You know, 90s, you go to, go to any used furniture store, anything from the 80s and 90s when they were really into natural wood that was polyurethane, it's all yellow. <laughs> because that's what polyurethane does. Anyway, let's go ahead and put the top. We're just going to set it on and we're going to put a coat of poly over it and, uh, Hopefully the cats stay the fuck away from it. So, wow, I love it. And it's weird to think that just eight hours ago, this thing was headed to the trash. Eight hours ago. Now look at it. Can you believe it? Ah, to Polly or not to Polly. Why don't we do this? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just test a spot. It could be the bottom. Let's see what it looks like. All right. So I did one thin coat of poly over the whole thing. We've got brush strokes everywhere, but that's okay. Um, I really suck working with poly. It's, you know, it, it can, to do it right, to do it really, really, really well, you have to take the time, give it your six plus hours of cure before coats and you can get nice results i'm probably gonna leave it at the one coat um i did one coat of paint and one i'm sorry one coat of primer one coat of paint one coat of poly ship it um 
the thing with poly is if it's tinted poly, like what I'm using, the more coats you put on, the darker it gets. And I don't want this to be dark. So I have two choices. I can stick with the one coat, which is what I'm going to do, or I could use a clear poly and do another one or two coats on top of it probably sanding in between to level it off but i'm gonna leave it the way it is i think this is this is the look i'm going for um and i don't have any clear poly on hand so we didn't attach the top to the base yet um that's going to happen later once i get it upstairs uh, this thing is so heavy right now that there's no way in hell I can lift it up those stairs. And I can't even maneuver it around the um, uh, the, the, um, the the landing to get it out into the breezeway. I'd have to carry it outside. So leaving it in two pieces is what I'm going to do. Um, as a matter of fact, I got this in the basement from the back door. So I'm going to have to carry it back out around the house and into the breezeway. This is what they call upcycling furniture. Um, this was a, this nine hours ago now, I think I miscalculated, like nine hours ago, this thing was in the trash. Nine hours ago. Now, if I were to sell this in a, in a furniture store, a used furniture store, I bet you I could get $500 for it. Um, I, that's an honest estimate. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. I, I love the way it came out. I mean, it's not perfect. It isn't perfect, but I like it. I really do. And I feel bad where this is going. It's going on our porch. This would look really nice in our kitchen as like an island or something. It's not really island height, but you get the idea. I'm serious. I bet you. I'm going to look for another one of these and I'm going to make a I'm going to make something out of it. I I'm going to probably put it in the kitchen. Um I I would like to find another one. Um we're always throwing away old furniture at work. So I bet you I get another one. And uh I'm going to keep my eyes open. Seriously. Wouldn't you want this in your house? I I mean this is a beautiful piece, and it's all solid wood. There is no particle board here. No particle board applies. The top, solid. The frame, solid. No particle board, no bullshit. Nice heavy-duty metal fasteners to hold the, the table legs to the frame. Um, ah, I love it so much. I went online to see what these tables cost today and to get one with a, um, they call it high impact laminate. That's code name for, for mica over uh, particle board. Uh, that's the top and the rest of it is, I believe, um, I don't think it's oak. I think it's like some other species of hardwood, but those tables cost around $400. The, um, this one originally had, as I said earlier, a, um, a slate top. Those are over $1,000 for something of this size, which is, if, you, if you've ever shopped for furniture, sticker shock is a real thing. Uh, we, we were actually shopping for a new table, a new kitchen table, dining room table. And we couldn't find anything for less than like $800 that was even close to suiting our needs. We ended up keeping the table we have and refinishing it. It looks like this. Same. This is actually the stuff I used. This is the paint I used. And we just refinished the table. And we love it. And, uh, and, and it's a good thing we did that because our cat, Tommy, has a penchant for scratching table uh, legs. So he ruined one of the table legs. I just had to repaint the damn thing. But, and he'll do that to this. I guarantee it. He's a little bastard. But it's our little uh, gray and white cat. Anyway, that's it. Um, I'll uh, do one more shot with it in situation. Uh, once this thing dries and I have it upstairs, we'll take a look at it one more time. But that'll be like in two days because it's going to take a long time for this oil-based paint to dry. 
All right, so the next morning, that's this morning, I put one more coat of poly on this, and it looks stunning. I haven't, I'm, I'm not doing this sanding between coat things. I'm just not going to do that. It's extra work, and I don't like work. So this is two coats of poly, and I think it looks pretty damn fine, if I do say so myself. Uh, it has already pretty much cured to a nice dry finish. Um, the thing when you're poly coating, you know, a butcher block, really anything, is you're going to watch, you got to watch for drips and runs, especially on vertical surfaces. So the, the edges of the table, you know, they were very quickly forming runs. So I had to run around with a wet brush and just kind of go over the edges. And this is, ha, ha, ha. Now, this is oil-based paint, so it takes a long time, especially in a humid day like this, to dry. I've got the dehumidifier going. It's helping, but it's very humid. So it could take two to three days for this to cure to the point where I can carry it upstairs and set it up and screw the top on. Um, and while it's sitting down here, I'm going to go under the table and I'm going to start... Uh, getting some some fasteners in place get some holes pre-drilled and uh, we're going to mount the top I've got to find I have some L brackets I want to add two more L brackets to the to the uh, to the mix um, I'm, I know I bought L brackets for some oh wait what are these thought I saw some so I got to find my L brackets and then we're going to go and uh we're going to have us a nice little table. And I, I love how this is coming out. This is, I just love it so much. From trash to treasure. And literally, I mean, you can't buy, you can't buy this today in a store for less than 500 bucks. You can't get a table of this quality for that. You just can't. Um, and I'm only a hundred bucks 120 bucks into it. Yeah.